What's going on guys? Waco from Revolution here with Kai Sun Kwong and Jeremiah Chen. Next to the fireplace, as you can see here, the flames <laughs> are licking the Revolution it sign. Caught it. You yeah, see exactly. Caught yeah. all this. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get some marshmallows <laughs> later and make some s'mores. <laughs> However, before we do that, we want to share with you our final pick for our favorite watches of Watches and Wonders 2023. And for me, it's going to be the brilliant IWC Engineer. It is oh, phenomenal, man. right? And you know, it's interesting because Jeremiah and I had the opportunity to play with the vintage model yeah. and also the contemporary watch. And the, I have to say the contemporary watch is just so much better. Yeah. It's so much more wearable, the inspiration of the bracelet, the thinness of the case. But I love the fact that even though they made it so much thinner, they kept the amagnetic property. They mm -hmm. kept the Faraday cage, which made that watch to Andrea to begin with. Right? Yeah. It's made in steel, both a black dial and a white dial. It's also made in an aqua dial, which I know oh. you have a real affection mm -hmm. for, Jeremiah. But I think my favorite version, in fact, the version that I've asked to purchase is the titanium watch. And what better brand to make a titanium watch than IWC, which yeah. is the pioneer in luxury titanium watches, which they did mm -hmm. back in the day with their collaboration with Porsche Design. So, Constant, what is your final choice for the best watches of 2023? My final choice of uh, Watch and Wonders would be, uh, you guys know, I love Rolex. I have a huge affection mm. for Rolex and uh, I am a vintage Rolex collector as well. So the, my last pick would definitely go to the Rolex um, 1908. Okay, uh, the reason nice. why I love that watch, it's, it's, it's nice to, um, it's to know that Rolex has actually uh, rec given recognition and uh, created a, a new series of watches uh, based on one of its uh, oldest and historically important models, which is the um, the bubble bags, right? Uh, launched in 1931, so um, it's, it's it's really similar, and you can actually see the um, the the uh, inspiration for 1908 is really actually from the bubble bag. And uh, I, I like that watch itself. It comes with a beautiful kind of explorer esque kind of mm. dial. You have the three, the the, the nine. 12 and 3, I think. Yeah. yeah, and then you have the small second, which is really reminiscent of our bags. Mm. And now, of course, uh, we, uh, it's an open case back now. Yes. I think, it, uh, yeah, yeah and the, yeah. the open case back now, you can actually see the beautiful finishing of Rolex movements. And uh, I think that that is so long overdue. I think Rolex has done uh, deep, really, good, really great movements finishing. And uh, finally, now, fantastically, the brand has started to recognize that. Do you, do you like it with the Cellini logo and all without? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's a great um, transition. I okay. think that it is a great design overall. Um, of course, uh, I would like it to be more simple. Sure. But uh, you know, it, it, Rolex is what Rolex is, you know, and I love the brand. So well, finally, they may keep it for a couple of years and then get rid of it. And then <laughs> yes. suddenly that watch will be collo super <laughs> exactly. collectible. Because it's like a transition. It's the Rolex way. <laughs> exactly. It's like, no, I have to say it is really impressive also um, that, you know, the, the Platona, as everyone's mm, calling yeah. it, or the Platinum Daytona, is also an open case back watch yes. as well. Mm. And we can see the level of finishing that, you know, which is okay, I get it. And thus finish mm. but an incredibly well executed and beautiful industrial finish it really is, these yeah. watches and it's really nice to see that you know rolex is kind of like elevating its game it's kind of shifting a little bit higher i would say in price category as well it's becoming a true luxury object even mm. though its roots are in sports in the same way i guess that you know like in hermes its roots are in saddle making but it's an incredible like you know sort of luxury brand yeah. today um, which is interesting because i kind of feel as if tudor is kind of occupying that that realm exactly. where you yeah. have the luxury tool watch now yeah. and mm. tudor is so good and then we have to talk also about the Tudor Black Bay 54 because that watch <laughs> wow. kicked ass. Yeah, yeah 37 yeah, meters beautiful. in width. Yeah. Oh my God, it was so wearable when I put it on my wrist. I didn't want to take it off. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry to, 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 to hijack the conversation right. about Tudor, but Tudor, we love that watch. That was phenomenal. But uh, uh, Jeremiah, what's your last choice for watches and wonders? Well, you talk about the Aquadal Engineer, that's got to be my pick. So, I mean, it's the same as yours. I mean, a different uh, configuration. But what was cool about the movement was um, the Caliber 80110, first introduced by the Peloton winding system yeah. uh, to the Engineer. Then when we move forward to 2013 uh, with the uh, reference 3239, Right, that was the first engineer reference which incorporated the crown guards. But now when we see you know the 2023 model, it kind of takes all those design cues and kind of like distill it all in one watch with you know back to the 40 millimeter size, but down to 10.7 millimeters in thickness and wow. it's so incredibly wearable. I love the enlarged sizing of the basket weave uh, uh, guilloche or pattern on the dial as well. And you know, I, I love the crown guards. I know it's a little bit of a divisive uh, uh, choice. You know, some people don't like it. I, I, I prefer it. No, I, I like the crown guards as well. Uh, you know, I had seen the kind of progression of this design over the last couple of years when Chris, uh, Christian Knoop and of course uh, Chris Granger were working on it. Uh, they had two cases initially, so they had like the more angular, historically correct case, which we see, and they had the kind of smoothed out um, mm -hmm. case as well, which is a little, little bit Porsche design actually, yeah. you know? Um, and then they finally decided on the case that we see today, but then they had a crown guard version and a non-crown guard version. And I remember last Watches and Wonders, uh, Chris showed them to me and said, which one do you prefer? 
I said, you know, actually, I like the crown guards. And it doesn't bother me when people want to move the story design-wise forward. I think it's actually necessary and healthy for our industry as well, rather than just only making things that are a repetition of the past. And on that subject, I have to give a shout out to Tag Poirier and the mm. new Carrera. It is a phenomenal watch, right? And if you want to talk about watches that move the design story forward boldly and unabashedly, that's that watch, you know, double glass box. Uh, and then I love the fact that, that it is essentially without a, an actual bezel, but has the appearance of a bezel, which is like on the flange, which is like kind of hovering underneath this beautiful um, sapphire crystal that's like angled and radius of two, two different, sorry, and this beautiful sapphire crystal that's radius at two different angles, right? And I think that the overall effect of that watch is that when you look at it, you see so many design cues that like, yeah speak to you that you're like oh that's a Carrera mm -hmm. but it's a modern watch it's a watch of today and I think mm -hmm. that they did a great job with that timepiece as well. Hey Constant yeah. you like that watch? Too, yeah right? I, mean, I, I mean I love that watch I, th I think it really gets a lot um, I mean we pretty much explain it explains it really because um you know it's a it's a 39 mm carrera you know mm -hmm. it is a it, it, it takes a lot from um when you look at it you can actually recognize that it's a carrera you know and the vintage counterpart of it is there and but tech Heuer did it and they try to add uh modernism yeah. to them oh yeah i mean the pushes mm -hmm. are kind of like the top hat yeah design, it's right? true Composite. yeah it's true and yeah. uh the overall look of the watch it's a modernized futuristic badass vintage yeah. carrera totally which great. is really really cool right okay. yeah this is really cool yeah. now one brand that i like to talk about also is a brand from two of my favorite guys one is guillaume ledet from mm. uh, nevada grinch and volcane and the other is uh independent watchmaker named theo offre which mm. makes one of the most beautiful tourbillons in the world and the two of them have teamed up with a new brand called argon and what is argon well it's the idea of taking super futuristic looking watches but making them accessible in price and we happen to have mm. one of the prototypes right here so it comes in this little case it actually comes in this bag, which I guess is meant to like be reminiscent of like the the, the, the food pack, the food right? pack, yeah, the yeah, food, yeah, exactly. dried food exactly. packs, exactly. the astronauts. Yeah. The Right, yeah. like the astro astronaut freeze dried food comes in. Yeah, it looks really so, nice. Yeah. I think yeah. you can try it. I, I bought the freeze dried ice cream. Oh, oh wow. Is it? It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the Argon watch, right? And, like, I just love the fact that you created this, like, you know, kind of UFO looking spaceship mm -hmm. with the wandering uh, hour and minute digital yeah. display on there. And it's, you know, to be fair, actually, quite a nicely made watch, all things considered. Mm -hmm. And the price of this watch is incredible 1,500 yeah. Swiss francs. Wow. I mean, that's phenomenal, right? Yeah. And, you know, when I was talking to Guillaume, and Theo, they were like, you know what? There are watches like this that we love. And of course, you know, whether you're talking about an Uwerk or an MBNF or a Debitum Dreamwatch, we love mm. these watches. But the thing is, those watches are only available to the very few, yeah. right? Because they are quite expensive and they should be. They're beautifully made watches. Mm. But it would be cool to create like um, a gateway drug for that style of watch. Yeah. I and mean, that's the Argon. Yeah, this is beautiful. I mean, it actually reminds me a little bit of the Seiko Discus Burger. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah the hour and the, you know, the rotating this. Um, very spatial look look alike, I would say. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, man, I, I love this. And 1,500 what, US? US, I think. Wow. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it comes in three materials. So we have the polished stainless steel, but it also comes in the sandblasted uh, titanium. Oh, that's going to be cool, yeah. Uh, and also a, a carbon. Forged carbon. Yeah, forged carbon. Wow. And both Forged. of those are limited editions of 100 pieces. So I think the Kickstarter is either uh, right now or soon. I think 4th of May. 4th of, launch, yeah. 4th of May. So you guys yeah. stand by and, uh, you know, um, be ready because I think these are going to go fast, right? Yeah. At least the limited editions in carbon fiber and titanium, yeah, but the steel one's cool sure. too. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you, Wei. Pleasure, sir. Pleasure. Jeremiah, thank you. Peace out, guys. Great fun.